Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a problem from the book Putnam and Beyond. Putnam exam is an annual math competition for undergraduate students in the United States. And this is a very interesting problem and it's very accessible, I think. X, Y, and Z are complex numbers. X plus Y plus Z is equal to one. X, Y, Z is equal to one. And we also know that the absolute value of each of these numbers is equal to one. And we're gonna be finding the X, Y, Z values. But remember, they are complex numbers, which of course includes real numbers. So let's get started. What are we going to do? We're given that x plus y plus z is equal to 1. So that information in and of itself is not very useful unless we do something about it. So here's what we're going to do. Since x plus y plus z is also a complex number because they're all complex numbers, I can go ahead and take the conjugate of both sides. Now what is that supposed to mean? If you have a complex number like z equals a plus bi, then I can just go ahead and write its conjugate as a minus bi. Of course, if b is equal to zero, then the conjugate of z is gonna equal itself. All right, great. Let's go ahead and change the pen a little bit here. Here we go. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'll start with x plus y plus z equals one, and then work with that. Since the right-hand side is a real number, I'm just going to go ahead and take the conjugate of both sides, Let's go ahead and do this and that because if a complex number equals another complex number, of course their conjugates are also equal. So now, from the, the rules of conjugacy, I guess we could make up a word like that, right? maybe that exists, we can safely say that the, the conjugate of the sum is equal to the sum of the conjugates. So it's gonna look like this. The conjugate of x plus the conjugate of y plus the conjugate of z is equal to the conjugate of one, in this case is one plus zero i, it's going to be one again. So this is the critical part. I was able to get the conjugate, why did I use this? Because I'm going to use the information given in the system. So I'm told that the absolute value is already equal to one. So what does absolute value have to do with a complex number and its conjugate? So let's talk briefly about that. The absolute value of a complex number, as you know, is defined as the square root of a squared plus b squared, and that is a real number. And if you multiply a complex number by its conjugate from difference of two squares, you get a squared minus b squared i squared, but i squared is equal to negative one, so you get a squared plus b squared, which happens to be the absolute value of z squared. So we have this interesting relationship between a complex number, its conjugate, and its absolute value. I could say that this is probably one of the most important identities that we have for complex numbers. Great, so let's go ahead and use that information here. Now, how can I use that? Well, I do know that the absolute value of x, y, z are all one, so let's just go ahead and use this identity for x. Let's see what happens. Then we, we can apply it to other ones. So this means that x times the conjugate of x is equal to the absolute value of x squared, but absolute value of x is equal to one from here, so this is also equal to one. So I got x times conjugate of x is equal to one. From here, what I can do is, I can isolate the conjugate of x and write it as one over x. Great, and of course you can say the same thing for y and the same thing for z. So let's go ahead and write them all. The conjugate of y can be written as one over y, and the conjugate of z can also be written as one over z. Great, most of the time we're used to seeing a complex number uh, and we usually use z for notation, but you could also use x and y, but they're usually reserved for real numbers. So we have these identities where the conjugate is equal to the reciprocal because their product equals one, the, I mean the conjugate and the, the number itself. So what we can do is we can go ahead and put this together. We have this equation here, let's go ahead and use that. So we know that the sum of the conjugates is equal to one because the sum of x, y, z is equal to one. That's where we get that from. So let's go ahead and substitute each of these, the reciprocals into this equation here. That gives us one over x, which is the critical part, plus one over y, plus one over z. So I replace the conjugates with the reciprocals of x, y, z, and that should equal one. Now this is super duper important because I can make a common denominator and get something nice out of this. Let's go ahead and make a common denominator. This gives me xy plus x, well, 
I'm not necessarily making it in that order, but you get the idea. We'll get xy plus xz plus yz divided by xyz. Or, or I can just make a you know common denominator and cross multiply. How about that? Hope you don't mind me doing it. Well, okay, fine. I'll show it. Here we go. This is divided by xyz if you make a common denominator. And that should equal 1. So when that equals 1, I can just go ahead and cross multiply here. And this should give me xy plus xz plus yz equals x, y, z. But guess what? x, y, z equals 1. So we know that. We're given that. So that means we have the x, y plus x, z plus y, z is also equal to 1. What else do we know? Well, we also know that x plus y plus z is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and put it all together and see what it means. So from here, I got a nice system. My system is made up of, let's use a different color here, maybe blue. How about writing it this way? I got xy plus xz plus yz equals 1. I got x plus y plus z equals 1. And I also got x, y, z equals 1. So this is kind of like a nice system in three variables, and we have three equations. What's that supposed to mean? I can use Vieta. Yay. Vieta is awesome, isn't it? So now, Vieta's formulas give us these. The sum of the roots, the product, and the two-way products. Or the sum of the two-way products, whatever. So we can go ahead and write an equation, a cubic equation, whose roots are x, y, z. So here's the challenge. You have an equation whose solutions are given as x, y, z with these relationships. And we're going to build the equation. So let's, just, let's go ahead and use... We're not, we can't use y. Can we use b? Uh, I don't want to use b. Okay, let's use u again. We used u, I know, recently, but that's okay. u is awesome. u substitution is great. So the equation, the cubic, is going to look like this then. u cubed. So you're supposed to do the following. The sum goes here with a negative because the sum is negative b over a, remember? And then u squared. And then you're supposed to write the two ways with the u. And finally, you get the product, but with a negative sign, and this gives us the full equation. So let's go ahead and replace x plus y plus z and everything else with what they are. x plus y plus z is equal to 1, so this gives me minus u squared. So this is 1. This is also 1. That's kind of interesting. And this is also 1. So everything is 1. Great. And we get this cubic equation, which is very easy to solve, by the way. So let's go ahead and solve it. Are we going to use the cubic formula? No. We're just going to use factoring because this is so simple, don't you think? Okay, let's see what happens. I take out u squared, I get u minus 1. I take out 1, I get u minus 1. Just to complete the picture, that's why I'm using 1. So I can take out u minus 1, and this gives me u squared plus 1. Now, I was able to factor my cubic so I can solve it. Set each factor equal to 0 by 0 product property. I get u minus 1 is equal to 0. From here, I get u equals 1. From the second factor, I get u squared plus 1 is equal to 0, which means u squared is equal to negative 1, which means that we have two solutions because, as you know, no real number squared can be negative 1, but this is not true for complex numbers. So we have the solutions i and negative i. If you want to call these u1, u2, and u3, u2, okay, u2, not 2u, but u2, you can do that too. And these are going to be all the solutions to our complex system. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.